welcome to a bright sunny day in the city of Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Um, so today we will be talking about uh, rules of administration of grants. What governs or how you need to decide on which route you will opt for if you want to attract the individual. For example, uh, say drug may be available as a oral capsule or oral tablet. At the same time, there might be a suspension or solution of the same drug. And on the other side, the drug may be available as uh, an intravenous or intramuscular injection. So you need to decide, uh, depending upon the scenario that you will face, uh, the route of administration of a particular drug. Now, having said that, uh, I need to clarify that uh, it's not that all drugs are available in all the forms. Uh, but if you have a choice with you, which route of administration you will opt for is an important question. Uh, so there are various factors basically which govern, in summary, uh, the route of administration of a drug. So if I uh, start thinking of that and I think on the side of um, the drug molecule itself, then the drug molecule uh, might be bitter to taste, non-palatable drugs. So the option remains is that you need to kill the drug by a palatal group like intravenous, intramuscular, and topical applications and so on. Uh, some of the drugs uh, might be destroyed by uh, the gastric tubes, for example, insulin. The best available way of giving insulin is either by subcute route, subcutaneous route, or by intravenous route. Some of the drugs uh, are irritant in nature, so giving them by certain routes, parental routes, might harm the local tissue. So they might cause a damage the site of injection and so on. So there are forms which avoid this kind of complication. So you need to opt for that. So that that's uh, in general about a drug quality. But on the patient side, uh, you know, think of extremes of age. Think of a very small child. At the same time, uh, you think of a very old individual who is not in the framework of uh, time, space and person, it's very difficult to tell them to swallow a drug. So you need to swallow a drug in the form of a tablet or a capsule. So you need to bring up uh, maybe syrup, solutions, liquid formulations of the same drug or you need to opt for uh, maybe an intravenous route or intramuscular route or whatever it might be for the drugs to be given to the individual. So there are multiple factors which govern, you know, depending upon the scenario, it governs uh, the route of administration. For example, one more thing which comes to my mind is emergency situations. Now in emergency situations, uh, you cannot opt to give a drug by oral route because it will take some time to act. Uh, at the same time, uh, intravenous route is the most preferred route because the drug reaches the body within milliseconds. It's inside the body, the whole drug and the action may start within a few seconds. So you want to have an action which will support life in such life uh, threatening conditions. So that's one of the factors. Uh, trans uh, topical applications. You do not want uh, patients uh, with skin disease to take drugs orally, mostly. So what the problem is with the skin. So why not apply some ointment uh, why not apply some cream to the skin and get cured from or whatever the remit disease or remit condition and so on. So, you know, depending upon the scenarios, you as a doctor or you as a patient might be experiencing uh, you know, this variety of uh, dosage formulations that are available and the doctor needs to decide from these dosage formulations which exactly he needs to go for and what kind of group of administration he needs to decide on. Now that was regarding the factors in uh, of, uh, groups of administration but speaking about groups of administration 
let's start with the most commonest one that is the oral preparations or the oral food of administration uh, now you'll agree with me most of us in our lifetime till now uh, uh, might have taken a tablet or a capsule or let it be a uh, antipyretic tablet like paracetamol or uh, antibiotic something else but we all have taken or a vitamin tablet whatever it might be we have all taken at some time or the other in our life a tablet or a capsule or a serum so orally drugs become more user friendly you know you don't require a doctor to be there with you or a nurse or health professional with you for 24 hours uh, to give a drug to you and then keep on monitoring you for the effects to come so that's one of the most uh, i would say the best part of giving drugs by uh, oral route uh, now as you don't require a supervision becomes more user friendly uh, definitely it's the cost of medication is going to go down the drugs can be stored in the form of oral tablet or a capsule or a suspension for a very long time do not require certain refrigerations and so on to keep the drugs for you it can be just kept in a cold dry place and just carried with you wherever you want to go so so there are so many benefits associated with oral formulations but at the same time as i said uh, a few minutes ago don't expect oral formulations to work instantly it's not going to happen that way because drug needs to get absorbed by the gi team and it requires some time so don't expect drugs to be given orally at times of emergency that's that one thing that goes against why oral formulations are not given mostly i should say given in cases of any of medical emergencies at the same time uh, you no know, drugs get absorbed through the git and then it goes on to the liver and liver is some kind of organ which 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 which, which tries to detoxify all the toxins all the foreign substances that come in so there is a issue of what's called as bioavailability that means a part of a drug is destroyed in the process of passing through the liver and a percentage of drug just reaches the blood circulation so if you do 100 mg maybe just 50 mg of the drug reaches the blood circulation so i mean looking at the therapeutic side you need to adjust the dose at some time or the required effects may not come there can be variability of the effect due to the first pass metabolism or viability factors there can be factors with absorption of the drug and so on so it's variable I and mean, the response will come but it will take some time but you cannot say that the response should come in the way you want if the to a extent i can say mostly the response comes in but Uh, there are issues there are cases where the response may not turn up as what is intended and within uh, the time frame required uh, for the for, for the drug to act so uh, that's what that was about one side of oral formulations and uh, oral routes of administration i would say the next part is uh, why not few drugs by sublingual sublingual split the term below the tongue lingual distance below the tongue there is area you can feel it yourself and so you just keep a tablet below the tongue for some time and the drugs will get absorbed because it's, it's a vascular part there's a mucous membrane over it and the drugs get absorbed through that part uh, now the best part of giving drugs by sublingual route is um, you know the veins on the that side they bypass the liver so you are bypassing the first pass metabolism so instantly the drug goes on to the body and the effects might come very quickly for certain emergency situations like myocardial infarction or heart attack in layman terms where you can do drugs like nitrate nitrate sublingual tablets just keep it under the tongue and uh, uh, just say the effects come in a few minutes It's a life-saving medication. Previously, they used to even give 
Mifidipine, that's an anti-hypertensive tablet in cases of very, very high hypertension by some lingual route. But remember, you cannot opt to give drugs which are bitter and non-palatable by this route. Logical sequence, you're keeping under the tongue, there's a sensory part over that side, so do not expect to just keep a very, very bitter tablet. At the same time, uh, what is important from sublingual part, uh, sublingual group of administration, you need to throw out or spit out the tablet as soon as the effect goes out. That, that's what is important. And many of the patients who suffer from myocardial infarction or angina know this thing. And if you ask any of those people, they will mostly carry a strip of uh, nitrates uh, with them. And they start getting pain, they rest at one part, they just keep one tablet to the tongue and the pain usually subsides, usually subsides. So that, that's the clinical part of giving drugs by uh, sublingual. Uh, so that was about oral sublingual, so something to do with the oral systems in general. But on the other side of the GID, you also have what's called as a rectum and the anal. And uh, so human beings have made use of all uh, kinds of uh, drugs uh, and forms of uh, drugs and try to give drugs in one or the other case via all the routes available. So rectal formulations uh, are forms of positories and so on. Um, so it's one of the ways in which drugs can be done. You push up a suppository, it's kind of a oval, uh, 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 I should say, it's a, uh, it's a capsule kind of thing, oral thing uh, that comes up, uh, oval one, and you need to just push it inside the rectum and uh, give the drugs by that route. The drug gets absorbed. Now remember that uh, you know, the external, you know, you have a set of veins inside uh, rectum and anal canal, that's the external hemorrhoidal veins, the internal hemorrhoidal veins and so on. The external ones, if the drug gets absorbed to them, it bypasses uh, the liver. So you get uh, uh, higher amounts of viability as far as rectal administration of the drugs are concerned. And you have cases wherein you have small kids with high fever and you push in antipyretic uh, suppository or the most commonest would be anti-convulsant uh, drugs against seizures in other terms uh, which can be given by rectal group. Now, a few disadvantages to giving drugs by rectal group, the uh, most would be, you know, it, it irritates the rectum, can cause irritation, itching. Some of the drugs might just come out after being partly absorbed. So becomes a issue, cosmetic issue because it might stain up uh, the clothes later on. So, I mean, uh, looking at those factors may not be a very good choice of uh, route of administration, but in certain emergent situations like high fever, you know, especially children, convulsions and so on, uh, you can opt to give drugs by rectal route. Uh, one more example which comes to my mind is enema. If you give enema for evacuation of the bowels, give enema for uh, treatment of certain uh, colorectal diseases, uh, autoimmune diseases and so on. So you know, enema also becomes a kind of example for uh, uh, giving drugs uh, by rectal uh, route of administration. Vaginal route of administration of uh, Drugs can be given by vaginal route. In fact, uh, infections of the vagina, you and fungal infections of the vagina and you treat it by giving uh, or keeping up a pastry uh, within the vagina of a female and uh, drugs get absorbed, acts on the local surfaces and gets absorbed. Drugs are preferred route of administration especially with white discharge from the vagina and so on. Drugs by parental roots. That is you directly inject a drug inside the body. What it means is you directly inject a drug inside the body. Um, so the first important uh, thing which uh, root of administration that comes to my mind is why not give drugs by intravenous route? There are a lot of veins, superficial veins. So you can pierce any of those veins uh, onto the extremities and you are directly in contact with the blood of an individual that's flowing. And so you can administer drugs which can then circulate within the body in a few milliseconds.
So intravenous route of administration, uh, preferred drug, uh, preferred route of administration, especially for inpatient, you know, patients hospitalized, you know, they usually opt to give drugs by intravenous route for them. Uh, various reasons why you need to give or uh, why it's a preferred choice. Uh, you give drugs by this route, uh, the drug is within the body within a few seconds. So the effect comes in very quickly. See. The next thing is uh, uh, what is the advantage of giving drugs by intravenous route is you, know, you can monitor the effects. You know, if you want that the effects of the drug should come up, go up, be positive within a few seconds or minutes because it, uh, the scenario demands that, you can just increase the dose. At the same time, if you want that the drug should stop acting, you just uh, stop the administration of the drug and the effects will go down. So there is less variability as compared to what happens with the GIT because absorption is not what human beings can govern from the hysteria, but you can start and stop the drug uh, in an intravenous preparation at a definite. So in emergency situations, it becomes preferred choice of agent preferred choice of route of administration. At the same time, you know, certain drugs which cannot be given by oral route because of previous factors, you can of course give them by intravenous route of administration. And examples for that would be higher order antibiotics, talk of virgin uh, which is and ciprofexam and so on, or hydrogen, higher order penicillins. All these antibiotics are usually available as intravenous formulations and a preferred way of giving them in certain infections and so on. So, uh, but there are certain disadvantages with this kind of administration. Uh, you require supervision, you require to uh, uh, go for needles, injections, and it increases the cost. You require monitoring because as the effects come up, even the side effects are supposed to come up very quickly and you need to monitor all these things so you require supervision at times to uh, uh, when the drugs are given for by intravenous route of administration. At the same time it's not something which the patient can carry back home. Uh, so only the inpatient ones were monitored will be the ones who can be given intravenous route of administration. Uh, previously, most of general practitioners used to go for some other route of administration as intramuscular route of administration. So you directly inject a tract within the muscle compartment of the body and it's one kind of parental administration. Though not practiced a lot nowadays, but uh, in the olden days it used to be uh, one of the preferred ways in which uh, injections used to be given. Uh, now remember the advantages of this route is again almost the same as that of intravenous route but it requires some time for the drug to get absorbed to the muscle area. So do not expect actions to come within a few seconds but within minutes the actions will be uh, usually seen. But remember it's a kind of a painful process because you need to you know, uh, go down with the needle inside the muscle compartment. So it's a painful process, uh, chances of formation of abscess are more, chances of formation of hematoma, that's a collection of the blood within the muscle compartment are more. So, uh, at disadvantages of giving drugs by this. And some contraindications would be some blood disorders. Uh, you have certain blood disorders wherein, uh, you know, the blood will just flow out if you injure any part of the body. So, you need to be very careful in disorder or this sickness like hemophilia, it is not advisable to give the drugs by uh, uh, intramuscular group of administration. I, I think we have ambulance on one side, on one side there is aircraft going up. We need to wait for a minute before I start the next thing. Anyway, uh, I hope the noise has gone down now. So the next uh, <laughs> Type of route of administration after the intramuscular would be the subcute route, and uh, subcutaneous route, of course, the examples would be drugs like insulin, uh, gold standard examples. You have subcute space, everybody has subcute space, and you have a very uh, a needle uh, which is very thin, number 26, uh, or you have now pens of insulin which are available, and 
can give drugs by something that is true uh, and uh, it's one of the preferred choice for drugs like insulin. Uh, so that was about the skin, intramuscular, intramuscular, intravenous. Uh, but then, uh, you know, you have roots of administration going up with injections within the spinal cord used for spinal anesthesia or for giving painkiller drugs. You have uh, roots of administration where drugs are administered within the joints, intra-articular injections for diseases of the joints. So that's one thing. You have roots of administration where you give drugs by uh, intra-arterial. We all talked of veins, so go back and now think of arteries which are deep inside. So even those at times are used for giving drugs, but uh, there is a risk that the patient might bleed a lot. So you need to be very careful while piercing the artery. It's not the same as piercing the vein because inside the artery, uh, the pressure of the blood flow is very, very high. So, so it requires a, a, a specialist to be around you to uh, you know, go for kind of intra arterial injection for uh, uh, now that was about parental roots, uh, which in general, which I think of now, and which I remember. The next part would be drugs which are given by topical application. Go to a dermatology or see advertisements on the TV. You think of so many things, like topical applications and so on. So these applications usually cover up uh, for skin and for the mucous membrane. So your ointments, creams. Uh, and so on, which you apply onto the skin for skin infections, and for skin conditions, or for just making your face glow whenever you want to. So these are all topical applications. But remember one thing that as a medical doctor that some part of this drug may get absorbed uh, through the skin. So it might be that some cases you might see a, a kind of a, uh, side effect profile of these drugs, so, but it's rare. But anyway, topical applications for skin conditions is the most commonest that is available for pre uh, Now, thinking on that side, even topical applications in forms of ear drops, ear drops, ear infections, ear drops, eye drops uh, for eye conditions, uh, drops for uh, nasal conditions, so intranasal drops, intranasal sprays. All are topical applications. They are applied on the skin, and that's how it becomes a topical application or onto the mucous membrane. So uh, that was about topical applications. But remember that it's only uh, you know kind of delivery of drugs or route of administration uh, for that particular organ. So you have an eye condition, you go for an eye drop. But if your eye condition, uh, I mean, it's not advisable to go for an intranasal drop. Uh, and so on. So it, it, it is very very organ specific, but side effects may come down because some part of the drug may get absorbed. So talk about uh, topical applications of the drugs. Uh, now there are certain other things which come to my mind when I talk of uh, use of administration is uh, you know, targeted drug delivery systems. So you uh, deliver the drug where the disease is. For example, you know, if, um, conditions like bronchial asthma, you know, breathlessness kind of thing. The problem is with the lungs with the bronchi. Previously, drugs were given by parental group, by oral group. So these drugs had a high rate of complications. So to avoid these complications, you, know, you give drugs directly onto the bronchi and the lungs. So you, how, how can you give that kind of a drug for administration is by inhalation? The air goes in and comes out uh, all the time. So the best possible way is to take help of this route. So inhalation route of administration okay, for conditions like bronchial asthma, where it's called as targeted drug delivery system. So you to target an organ for giving a drug. So giving a drug or curing a disease, but at the same time decrease the side effect profile of the uh, of the drug agents under concentration. Uh, the targeted drug deliveries are also used in GI. For example, the problem is within the large intestine. You do not want that drug should open up within the stomach. So you develop capsules or you develop tablets 
which will only release the drug when the drug reaches the insect. So it's another way of targeting drug delivery systems. So this is about targeted drug delivery systems. But there are some other things also newer, new upcoming, you know, this kind of a, a, a research development area where every day you have a new way of administering drugs. So you have certain pellets nowadays or transdermal patches nowadays which come up. So what are these things? You know, these things basically are making the drug more user friendly, decrease frequency of administration. You know, if there is an executive who is always on the go, does not remember to take the drugs and uh, you know, he is busy with his schedule. So you do not uh, want him to always remember about taking drugs four times a day and so on because there comes a compliance issue. So to help all these individuals, why not have a drug delivery which will encapsulate within itself the drug for a long period of time and controlled release of that drug will take place for over whatever time period it is supposed to be there uh, or what is thought of. So you have transdermal patches go to any supermarket and you will find those transdermal patches as painkiller drugs uh, available. So these are kind of a uh, you know, bandage kind of a thing with a reservoir of drug. It comes in rectangular patch or a longitudinal patch. Just apply it onto the skin and just forget it. Now this patch, you will have a drug reservoir. The drug will re get released onto the skin. Control release of the drug will happen for a period of time and the drug will get absorbed through that. So, making it more user friendly kind of thing. Or in other terms, you have pellets, so small balls of drugs. You just insert them within the skin somewhere. You require a small operation to be done for that. But then you forget for the next four to five months or six months or whatever it might be. The drug will remain inside the skin for a long period of time and get released for a period of time. So the effects will be there 24 hours. So you need not worry about that. Your anti contraceptives, hormones which are given by this group of administration. So that was my analysis for the day. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the session and the lovely atmosphere in which I am sitting. Uh, uh, to catch up, keep watching, do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.